Well, in, in uh, the first part of the uh, Section 6.1, we talked about uh, the notion of probability and statistical inference. Now, let's, in the second part here, let's talk about what we mean by a probability experiment. We can define a probability experiment as a process that leads to well-defined results called outcomes. And uh, we see here in slide number seven, the two conditions that must be satisfied for an experiment to be a probability experiment. Uh, the first is the outcomes must be unambiguous, meaning that uh, the uh, outcome of an experiment has to be empirical. In other words, we have to be able to see the results and um, it can't be wishy-washy as far as what the outcomes are. We have to be able to write it down with certainty uh, what the outcome is for a specific um, uh, uh, experiment. And then the second condition is that um, all the possible outcomes have to be predictable, but on any given trial, the outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. In other words, there has to be somewhat of an element of uncertainty about it for an experiment to be a probability experiment. All right, well, let's take a look at an example and see if we can um, classify experiments as uh, probability experiments here. So um, in example two on slide number eight, uh, let's try this. Let's determine whether the process represents a probability experiment. So in part A here, it says the suggestions card at Pappy's Restaurant asks for customers to rate the service as fair, good, or excellent, and then rate the quality of food on a scale from 1 to 5, with 1 being superior and 5 being lousy. Well, let's see here. Um, let's think about the, the solution for this now. So for example 2, uh, let's see, um, the outcomes are clear, uh, and uh, they, were, they were to rate the service, let's just look at that again, as fair, good, or excellent, fair, good, or excellent. So when you look at the data that would come out of this experiment, notice here it would be one of these three words, which is a form of data um, that we can talk about later. It's called nominal level data. And then the food was rated from one to five. So in other words, um, these rankings of the food are predict are, are uh, you know, they're uncertain because different people have different tastes. But it's clear that one of the answers is going to be one of these digits, one through five. So this is a probability experiment. All right. So uh, part A is a probability experiment. Now, let's uh, move to slide number nine here and take a look at part B. Uh, and we want to determine if this process represents a probability experiment. A random sample of 1,050 people were asked, if you could change your name, what would you change it to? If you could change your name, what, could you, what would you change it to? Well, it looks here that in part B, that the outcomes are not predictable. I mean, you could change your name to anything, and uh, uh, you, 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 can, you can't write them all down in, in advance. Uh, that wouldn't be practical. That's called the sample space to write all the possible outcomes. And so in this case, um, the process is not a probability experiment. All right. So we talked about the difference between a, a, a uh, probability experiment and not. 
And then we talked about this notion of statistical inference. And now in uh, slide number 10, let's take a look at another uh, type of uh, uh, piece of information that we'll need for later on. The, uh, the difference between an ordered and an unordered sample. Now, um, by a sample, um, uh, by the order being important, we mean that one of two things. The order or arrangement makes a difference, or there is a ranking involved of the members of that arrangement. So if there's a ranking involved, or the order makes a difference, there's a distinction, we say their order is important. Otherwise, we just simply say order is not important. All right, so let's take a look at an example of one of these now. So um, in slide number 11, let's see if, if order is important here. Um, in part A, it says the chess club at Dyston High School has 15 members. When computing, how many ways can a president, a vice president, a treasurer be selected? In other words, is order important here? So notice in this case, in example three, part A, there is a ranking. That would be the president, the vice president, the treasurer, and so on. So order is important. All right. So that's part A. Now in slide number 12, uh, let's take a look at part B here. Uh, it says the central office at Higgins Corporation has to choose three of eight original office, uh, regional offices for an audit. When computing, how many ways the regional uh, the regional offices can be chosen is order important. So let's see here. Here we have eight of these regional offices. Eight offices. And we want to choose three to visit. And so here it looks like it doesn't matter which three it is. They're certainly not ranked where one is the best, one is the worst, that kind of thing. So in this case, order is not important. All right. So so there we've learned uh, the distinction between order being important and, and, and it not. And then we talked about uh, what it means for an experiment to be 